We'll see if Keon can get the momentum on his side as well. As we start game one of top eight, Keon Campbell versus Colin Heyer. Colin leading Whimsicott Raging Bolt on his side versus the Zashian Tornadus for Keon. Right away, we got a Tailwind Setter A piece coming out from both players. Tornadus over on Keon's end of the board and then the Whimsicott over on Colin's. Zacian is a Pokemon that, even though it did get nerfed heading into Scarlet and Violet, still has a lot of attack, and that is going to be at a plus one now, thanks to that Intrepid Sword. And this can threaten a lot of damage into that Raging Bolt over onto the opposing end. The Play Rough, even with the Terrestrialization, can do heaps. And of course, with the Whimsicott, you would like to be sticking around more than just a turn if there is going to be like a Bleak Wind hit into the other end. You do need to be careful with the Tornadus, though, because that would not appreciate any sort of Electro Web to kind of drop some sort of stats or a Thunderbolt straight into it. And since the Zacian does have the Rusted Sword, there's nothing to stop any of its stats being lowered. No swaps from either of the trainers here on turn one. So Raging Bolt is going to terrestrialize on Collins and dropping that dragon typing. Of course, that would have been disastrous for it and since the play rough and the Zacian is on the other side. So going just a mono electric type, getting rid of that huge weakness. Whimsicott will protect itself from this behemoth blade. That would have been really strong, probably bringing it down to its focus sass there. So Colin feeling a little bit confident. Bleak Wind Storm also not gonna hit Whimsicott. So Keon really went aggressive there into the Whimsicott. Did not get paid for it. Hardly any damage even with <laughs> a critical hit to Raging Bull. And now you're gonna have a Terra Electric boosted Electro Web to both of his Pokemon. Kian going down to about 20%, 30% HP remaining on Tornadus. And that is huge. A huge protect coming out from this Whimsicott to make sure that it doesn't go down. So essentially wasted coming out from the Zacian and the Torn has taken a lot of damage. And if you are looking to match Tailwinds over on this turn, it is then a Tailwind that you're forced to kind of be clicking over on Kian's end of things. Whereas Colin's kind of just in the driver's seats from that. And being able to get that speed drop onto the Zacian already, those kind of stacked ups is another way to be winning that speed war. Now another terrestrialization coming out. Very on to the Zacian. We are looking for some potential damage. Yeah, because he, as a already being a fairy type, when you translate into that fairy type, you gain an additional boost to those same type attack bonuses. So now fairy attacks like Play Rough are going to do double damage, a massive amount of damage that Play Rough can do if it is, uh, if it lands, which we know 90% of the time, Play Rough does connect, but we'll see what happens here in this set. Tornadus is going to get knocked out, so no more support is available for uh, Kian here in this Tornadus for the rest of game one, but what will this minus two speed Zashian go for? It's the Play Rough Terra Fairy boost into the, just the electric type. It doesn't matter. Raging Bolt is down. With that plus one attack and the Terrestrialization boost on top of the same type attack bonus, that is going to be a lot of damage coming on through and the raging bolt sure you try to translize out of it but it's not going to matter at this point though colin does have the advantage with the speed over on his end sure there is tailwind a piece for both of these trainers but with the negative two speed sat onto that zashian that was a little bit more hard pressed to come by and even something like a swap out on the next turn means you are going to be losing a little bit of momentum as well as that attack um raise that you do have currently Chiu hitting the field. This is something that can pressure both of these Pokemon. Yeah, that Sword of Ruin activating for, for Kian's Chien Pao and the Beads of Ruin activating right now for Chiu on Collins. And so a bolt of their, uh, their sides are going to be doing more damage because of those abilities. Protect from the Chien Pao, not wanting to take any damage this turn around as Heat Wave coming on out. Of course, nothing to that slot. We did drop, um, steal from the other one. Still enough for the KO. It's not enough. I mean, when you get a Chi Yu uh, with a with a half health target, those beads of ruin, even as a, a neutral hit, it's so tough for a Pokemon like Zashin to take that hit. So Kian does lose his restricted Pokemon here in game one. Champ out will not take any damage because of the protect. And now we get to see the fourth and final Pokemon coming out from Kian, and it's going to be the Urshifu. And now at this point, we are looking at two turns left to Tailwind for both of these trainers. And of course, no other speed modifiers in play. The Urshifu over on Kian's end is not going to be the choice Scarf instead of Mystic Water. So when you do get to attack, you get to a hack. We are still eyeing up a restricted of choice for Colin. Of course, that Coridon in the back. We do have a double priority as well for Kian if we are expecting an attack coming on out. 
But if you hit that improperly into the swap, then the sucker punch wouldn't do anything but a miss. That she, she, it misses the crucial target. Wow. It misses Chien Pao. Or Chifa, you're doing resisted damage. Chien Pao's going to respond with an icicle crash into that slot. It's ineffective, but you can't see it because of the critical hit. Just doing massive amounts of damage. And the Moonblast into her Shifu will be enough to knock it out. So fortunately for Colin, he still does get a KO on this turn. He just would have done a lot of damage to the Chien Pao if Heat Wave connected. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to break the focus dash of the Chien Pao here on this turn. But one Pokemon left for Kian with three over on Collins and Icicle Crash too. If there was a potential swap going in on that turn, would have been devastating damage to the back, but the critical hit still dealing a significant amount, just not enough. Protect over on this turn. Yeah, the Chien Pao will just protect this final turn here, trying to stay safe. Colin having a three to one Pokemon advantage right now with this low health Chien Pao. Whimsicott is still there. And then of course we have the benefit of seeing Colin's perspective, knowing Coridon is in the back four. Yeah, and this Chiyu, I mean, Tailwind's going to be peering out for both opponents here, but Choice Scarf Chiyu still being able to go so fast, and a Tailwind still option for Colin since he has that Pokemon. I mean, at this point, you just have to be connecting your moves. That we're getting to see another Heat Wave. This one will connect this time down to Sash. Yeah, bring it down to that Focus Sash. No Sucker Punch or anything. Uh, just trying to get a cheeky KO, but instead Icicle Crash into the full HP Whimsicott, bringing it down to its Focus Sash activating there. So Whimsicott, uh, that's what that's why it's so difficult to deal with as a supportive Pokemon, because you need multiple attacks into that slot. And every time you focus on Whimsicott, you're leaving Chi Yu or Coridon or Raging Bolt safe on the field. At this point, you just gotta click some button, Sucker Punch into the Whimsicott. We'll put Colin down to two Pokemon on this turn. But she will be connecting. That's Chien Pao taking care of and Colin to take game one. And even if the Heat was watching to understand how these teams both have tank, uh, prankster tailwind users, but the uh, the team compositions and their strategies are not necessarily the same. So we know speed is going to be so crucial in this set and in this game too. Kian making an adjustment to lead Rillaboom next to Zashian, but then Colin brings it back with Whimsicott Raging Bolt. All right, so right away with this Rillaboom, you can pressure a fake out into the other side looking at this Raging Bolt. It is the Assault Vest, so there isn't an option to go for any sort of protect on this turn. Making sure that, hey, maybe speed can kind of stay in your wheelhouse, even though we aren't going to see the Tailwind being able to set up from Kian's end with the Tornadus. Not here, at least not in the lead. Trasalization once again. You got to keep honest here. This will help you with your damage output as well, making sure you're not on the wrong end of a play rough from the Zacian. Yeah, Terra Electric yet again for Colin, two games in a row, but the fake out will stop its chance at clicking its moves. Encore is going to force Rillaboom there, so smartly anticipating Raging Bolt to be the one that got hit by the fake out. That is going to force Rillaboom to continue to click fake out, meaning Keon essentially has to switch it out. Play Rough does not knock out Raging Bolt this time around, so he's able to stick around at low HP. No terrestrialization coming out from the Zashian, which would have helped boost that damage into it. But now this Raging Bolt gets to be hanging on. And even without the Tailwind set on the first turn, it's something that you can't be going on for this turn. And sure, the Zashian then can fire off another attack going on forward. But it feels so bad when you know that this Rillaboom essentially has to be swapping out on this turn, since that is something that from the back is going to be taking a hit on the way in. And you're losing a little bit of pressure going on forward. Yeah, I think at this point, the using your terrestrialization understandably on Colin's side to uh, endure that play rough, it's smart because now the Raging Bolt gets to stick around on this turn, but you're such slow HP that it's not going to be around for too much longer. However, if you can predict what Kian is deciding to swap that Robum into, you can get a really huge advantage. Whimsicott using Tailwind, doubling his team's speed, and this Raging Bolt has a need, a need for speed. Volt Switch, one hit KO, gets the KO and gets to swap out safely. Well, that definitely does not feel great to lose the Tornadoes right on that swap in. I wonder even if there is the possibility you're imagining about whether keeping it in to just tank a hit because you know that, right. hey, the assault right, has what are Whimsicott and, and Volt yeah. Switch going to do to the grass type? You right. don't do much, and you would also have taken care of the Pokemon on the other end. She would just get sent right Ooh. into its downfall. <laughs> One hit KO. That is definitely a way to be exacting a little bit of revenge going Z on into Zachi this. Zachi was, was, uh, was pretty frustrated. <laughs> he took, it, he took his vengeance out. How dare you take down this Tornadoes? Yeah. You will pay for that. <laughs> he took his vengeance out on 
the Chi Yu. Now Rillaboom swaps back down to the field. Grassy Train was already set up. So you're looking from Kian's perspective, the, the fake out, as we saw, it's not free to click because you can get punished by Encore. The thing is, though, you have to be making the call into that if you're calling, because if you're all of a sudden hitting Encore into a Rillaboom that does opt to go on the offensive on this turn, well, that's then locking a Rillaboom into an attack that's probably ah, A-OK -okay at this situation, especially, too, if you're eyeing up this Rillaboom and want to go for even just a um, high horsepower or something into the Crydon over on the other end. So you have to be so careful when you're making heads-up plays like that. Grassalization now from Kian into the Zacian. Now this is a way to be dropping some of that weakness and getting a little bit more offensive pressure. Yeah, going to do this second game in a row for Kian. Of course, Zashim is so crucial to his success this weekend. 12 and 2, making it farther than Kian has ever gone at a BGC event with this Zashim. We'll see if it'll prove him useful. Fake out goes to the Whimsicott, breaking the Focus Sash and stopping it from going for an attack on this turn. Crydon did protect as well, so really no damage there uh, from anything. But now the, the Rillaboom, you're, I guess you can call it like you were talking about, Sierra. You either stay in and get Encore or you have to swap. Again, if Colin wants to be eyeing up that Encore, it is going to be something that is losing a little bit of momentum and that damage over on his end. And if you're eyeing up the Zacian and needing to try and take care of it before the Tailwind turns on your team are done, it can be a little bit more difficult. Grassy Glide into the Whimsicott, a little bit of chip, but here is the Flare Blitz. Even with the sun, thanks to the trapsalization, takes it a lot better. Yeah, no longer a steel type mini, no longer super effective, but can Whimsicott's double up take no! it? No, Zacian hanging on with a sliver of HP remaining and hit this player up is so huge. It connects out to Karadon. Four times super effective. You could have given Karadon like like 800 HP and it would have still knocked out four times super effective. That survival with the Zacian was absolutely everything. Colin with the double up, you need to take care of that big bad restricted. But no, being able to just stay around. Now the Raging Bolt re-hits the field. The damage, it's already so little. And now since you've dropped your Dragon Typing, you are going to be taking more from something like a Grassy Glide on the other end of the field. So you can get punished by a priority move. Yeah, that's the struggle for Colin right now because the, the Whimsicott, it does have Moonblast. You know, obviously that would be enough to knock out the Zacian at this point. But what can you do against a Grassy Glide or Rillaboom? The answer so far is nothing as Raging Bolt does get taken out on this turn. Colin down to just the poor little Whimsicott by itself. Here is the Moonblast, though, to get rid of Zacian. So there is some benefit because now he will be forced to, or Kian will be forced to reveal his fourth Pokemon in this matchup. But he still has a two to one advantage. Yeah, and this Whimsicott, sure, the Moonblast, it definitely does a decent little chunk of damage. The Whimsicott has definitely surprised me on more than one occasion here. But when you're staring down Assault Vest Rillaboom, at this point, it's Chien Pao that does have a Focus Sash and Tailwind expiring. It is a Whimsicott that unfortunately cannot do it all. So with that, the run button right there. Yeah, Colony is going to forfeit here in game two and trade that, yes, you got knocked out on Tornadus, but it cost you pretty much your entire HP bar. Let's talk about game three, Zashkin Tornadus versus Karidon Whimsicott. Colin leaving Raging Bolt in the back in game three. We didn't hesitate getting into this next game. The trainer is picked so fast, but we got a double tailwind over on both ends of the field and both the restricteds hitting it field hard. When you're looking at this, of course, the Whimsicott would be able to right away be able to set one up, though the Prankster on the other one can match. Already, too, we're getting terrestrializations coming on out. You have to make sure that you're not going to be on the wrong end of a play rough here. We already know that yeah. that deals way too much damage. Yeah, not surprised to see the fire type. Spoiler from last game. Go from four times a week <laughs> to now resisting play rough. You also resist Behemoth Blade as a fire Ooh. type. So that's really important for uh, the amount of damage Zashin can do. But Rain Dance from Tornadus is going to lessen the damage that fire attacks do by 50%. Meaning Tornadus <laughs> tanks that like a champ. This is, remember, Karate? On. That's the box legendary. That's one of the most powerful Pokemon in the game, and it hardly did anything. Behemoth Blade brings Whimsicott down to 1 HP, activating its Focus Sash. And now, on this next turn, even if you want to be going for something like a Bleak Wind Storm or something, you could be picking off this Whimsicott. You have 100% accuracy with that Pokemon from here on out. The Zashi and Behemoth Blade in to the, the Whimsicott that has been so problematic was really, really nice. Of course, when you are facing down this Crydon on the other end, 
with now the terrestrialization, it's not going to be something that you're hitting as much damage into. So you would have to need Levesque a little bit more into that, of course, since your moves of choice are going to be Steel and a Fairy type. But that is going to be the first part of the battle and getting the terrestrialization out. If he does have that Urshifu in the back, that is something that could be huge once one of these Pokemon go down. Tailwind, first coming out from Colin. Yeah, Whimsicott knows it might not be around for most of this match since it's remaining, so get the Tailwind up before it goes down. Flare Blitz in the rain does less than half to the Zashian there. A little bit of recoil, no burn as well to keep the Zashian really strong. Behemoth Blade finally gets rid of the Whimsicott, and since we saw uh, Tornadus did not click a Prankster boosted move, you know it's going to be that uh, Bleak Windstorm. 100% accurate, single target as well. Coridon, really dangerous spot with not a lot of HP remaining. Even resisted hits from the Intrepid Sword boosted Zashian might be able to pick that up. At this point, too, the Whimsicott, knowing that you were just on a sliver of health, had to be going for the Tailwind on that turn. So as of this moment, Colin does have the speed over on his end. The Tornadus, if you want to be matching that before it goes, you can click it on this turn, which means you have staggered the Tailwinds by one, meaning at some point in the match, you will have that prior, you will have that speed for one more turn, and that could be pivotal going on forward. But talking about the right here, right now, Chiyu hitting the field does have a Choice Scarf, so it is going to be really fast out here. But of course, fire moves because of the rain, severely suppressed. You can eye up a Dark Pulse as well into these Pokemon, but it's already not going to be doing the most into the Zacian, and some of the Pokemon in the back would also take that hit quite well, like something like the Urshifu. Yeah, and I do think one thing Kian has to wonder, since Raiding Bolt led both first two games and has not been shown so far, is he has to think from his perspective, is Raging Bolt in the back? Because you really do need to preserve the Zacian in play rough to deal with that. So we'll see if Kian tries to preserve his Zacian for later to wait until that information is revealed. On this turn, it's just going to be a double protect from both of Kian's Pokemon. Uh, talking about what you just mentioned, staggering the Tailwinds. Now, instead of just one beneficial Tailwind turn, you can get two where your speed is faster. As well, when you are staring down a choice item Pokemon on the opposing end of things, the Chiyu now, you know what it's locked into for the remaining time that it has here on the field, which is going to be that Heat Wave. That is a spread damage move, and with Beads of Ruin and just the natural special attack of this Pokemon, even a double up from these two fire type um, moves could be doing just enough damage to get you across that final line. Here, we'll finally see the Tailwind and a double connect. Yeah, Heat Wave is going to hit on both, but Zashian hanging on. Flame Charge, Coridon moves next. The Zashian's such low HP that the water doesn't re the ma matter at all. Zashian goes down. It would have been so huge to get a play rough onto Chiyu. We saw it knocked it out from full HP in the previous game. So Tornadus sticks on the field, but Zashian is gone. I think when you're staring down these two fire-type Pokemon, if you do have an Urshifu in the back, it's something that could be doing a lot of damage. Even this Rillaboom that is hitting the field now, sure, a Grass-type Pokemon going up against two fire-type Pokemon uh, kind of hurts for half a second here, but this is going to be a Rillaboom that has access to a ground-type attack to be hitting into either or of these Pokemon. Flame Charge from the Coridon, I want to talk about that. Doesn't hit for as much damage, but when you know the Pokemon on the opposing end does not have much health left, this is a way to start trying to gain a little bit more of that speed back in your favor for when the Tailwind does end. I believe this should be the last turn of it for Colin, and now a plus one speed for his own Restricted to make sure that even when his Tailwind ends and Kian's remains, you still have a potential way to try and be outspeeding to put some more offensive pressure on. Yeah, and that, that uh, the flame, the flame charge that you're talking about, really confident from Colin to know that you needed the heat wave damage and you were relying on heat wave connecting. Because if you've seen uh, people using Chiyu over the last couple of years, it's really tough if heat wave misses. Ground type terrestrialization from this Rillaboom. So all of a sudden, you're no longer going to be taking super effective hit from the fire type attacks but as well, a high horsepower that you're eyeing up, that is going to be even more damage. Yeah, and the, the Raging Bolt has to be shaking in its boots in the back, seeing a Terra Ground Rillaboom on the other end. Collision Course, though, into this now ground-type Pokemon does pretty much exactly 50% of Rillaboom's health. And now here is the Heat Wave, protect on the Tornado to keep it around, but it does connect onto the Rillaboom, hardly doing anything. This rain has been so gigantic for Keon's strategy here in Game 3. Now the high horsepower into the Chiyu. Super effective one hit KO. Colin down to his last two Pokemon and one of them is the electric type Raging Bolt against ground type Rillaboom. Yeah, that definitely does not fare well for that Raging Bolt whatsoever. Of course, you do want to be looking at the fact that Kian still has a fourth and undisclosed Pokemon in the back as well. The momentum that he has here is humongous. The Raging Bolt does at least have full health. 
to try and get you across that finish line here. The Rillaboom has been brought down to low half on this. So if you do want to be firing off another collision course into that slot, it is something that we did get to see the outspeed last time around to try and be able to pick off that Pokemon. You would still have then the final Pokemon, but I'm sure it'd be something that if it is the Urshifu, that the Raging Bull can deal with a little easier. Yeah, this is a really important turn for Colin. His tournament life is on the line right now. Kian has the 3-2-2 two, two Pokemon advantage right now, so it's going to be really important uh, for Colin. But what two Pokemon would you rather have on your team than the Coridon and Raging Bolt? Those are kind of what the team is made of. Those are the core Pokemon here. So Colin, it's not like Colin is out of the woods in any uh, stretch here when he has access to Raging Bolt and Coridon. Tornado is actually swapping out hard, switching into the TM. This can be dangerous if Chan Pao gets targeted because that would break its focus sash. Kian wants to save it for later, but Thunderclap means that Chan Pao takes no damage. Thunderclap fails because no attack came from that slot. Collision Course goes into Rillaboom. It did 50% last time. It does more than enough to KO Rillaboom. Not losing the Tornadus on that turn thanks to the Thunderclap into it. You do lose your Rillaboom, but the Chan Pao did get in freely this turn. And you can be offering a Sucker Punch into something like the Crydon over onto that next turn. It does have access to Protect. The Tornadus is on a sliver of health. No Urshifu. It's going to be the Treasure of Ruin to try and get it done almost by itself. When you're staring down the Raging Bolt, you can be pressuring something like an Icicle Crash into it, but then you still have to worry about the Crydon. At least your Focus Ash is still intact. But even if you're worried about a Thunderclap, if you do go for something that's not a priority move, all of a sudden the Thunderclap will break that Sash. Another you know, clap from Raging Bolt. We'll bring it down. Chien Pao does uh, survive there. Wouldn't have mattered anyway since he had the focus sash. But I Icicle Crash does connect, takes out Raging Bolt. That's super effective. One hit KO. Chien Pao saving it for later could be what brings Kian into top four. Collision course from this Karad on here into Chien Pao will be able to take it out. And now this is where it gets a little scary with Tornadus. Your only attacking move is Bleak Windstorm. 70% accurate. And, and he gets the KO! Kim Campbell will be moving on to top four for the Los Angeles Regional Championship. Relying on a bleak.